Hi, this is Bart Polson. This video is a walkthrough of an exercise from Zed Shaw's online book, Learn Python the Hard Way. If you go to his webpage, learnpythonthehardway.org, and click on Read the Free HTML Online, that'll take you to the table of contents. In this video, we're looking at exercise 19, which is called Functions and Variables. If you click on that one, it'll bring you to this page. Now, we've got a fair amount of code right here. This is what you're, we're going to be working with. But it's kind of repetitive, and the concept shouldn't be too hard. So actually, I'm just going to go straight to my text editor. I'm using Text Wrangler. You can use anything you want. And let me run through this bit by bit. Now, the first thing we're doing here is we're going to be defining a function. So we talked about that previously. This is code you can create that is like a program within the program. The way we do this is we type the word def for define and then give the function a name. This one is called cheese and crackers. Please note, uh, it has to be one word. You can use underscores, you can have letters or numbers. You can't begin with a number, but there we go, cheese and crackers. And then in parentheses, you put the arguments if you have any. Um, and in this one, we're, we're gonna be providing two pieces of information, the cheese count, the uh, amount of cheese you have, and the boxes of crackers, how many boxes you have. We close the parentheses, then we have a colon to indicate we're about to define things. You come down here and you indent four lines, and then the function, when we run it, is gonna do a few things. It's gonna print to the, or display on the console, the text, you have so many cheeses, and it's gonna to refer to cheese count, and that's the variable that we provided right there. Then it's gonna print another line that says you have so many boxes of crackers, and it's gonna be referring to this variable we have right here. Then it's going to say, man, that's enough for a party. And then it's going to have a last line, get a blanket. And then it's going to put a, uh, this last little character will just put the cursor on a, a blank line. Anyhow, so that's the function. Now, the point of this exercise is how do we fill in this function? we got a few choices. One is we can call the function or run it. And you just do that by writing down cheese and crackers. Remember, that's what we called it right here. And then you just have to provide two numbers. We could just say, you know, 20 for the cheese count and 30 for the box of crackers. And that's all there is to it. That's the easiest way. Just put the numbers in directly. The next one is you can use a variable. So we can actually create a variable called amount of cheese and make it equal to 10. Or we can have another variable called amount of crackers and make it equal to 50. And then when we call our function cheese and crackers, in parentheses, we just refer to those variables. Now, I know this looks kind of stupid right here. You thought it'd just be a lot easier to write 10 and 50. But you'll find that this, the ability to call variables in a function, is incredibly powerful. And you're going to use this basically every single time you do something. And so this is probably the most common approach you're going to be using. You have a function, and then you call on a variable uh, that may be based on a big algebraic equation somewhere else to fill it in. So that's another way to do it. Another one is you can actually do math within this. And he says that, look, you can do 10 plus 20, and it knows to interpret that as 30. And, the, and this one, 5 plus 6, it'll interpret that as 11. And you can actually do a combination of the two. You can do cheese and crackers, where you put the amount of cheese as a variable plus 100, and amount of crackers plus 1,000. This is really common, too, for instance, if you're trying to uh, set up something on the screen and you need to divide it in a particular way, you have to add margins or you have to space things out uh, to get them centered or divide it up however you want it. And so you will have both variables and constants to do that. And that is a really common way. Anyhow, with that, all we're going to do is come over here now. I'm already in my scripts folder. Uh, that's my current working directory. See, here I am, scripts. And I'm just going to type in Python and then ex19.py. And when I hit return, it runs off a whole bunch of stuff because what it's doing is it's calling the function four times. The first time, now remember, this just defines the function. This is the first time right here that we call the function. We do this little print thing, then we call the function. There's the print, and there's the function being called, and the numbers 20 and 30 getting filled in. Then we print this line, or we can use variables. There we go. And what we have, oh, by the way, you see how there's a blank space right here? That's because of this, the um, backslash n, the new line um, that appears in the last part of the function. 
So there will always be a blank line at the end of this function. So this one, the 10 and the 50, we got from creating variables right here, and then the function called on those variables. Then we have this line. We can even do math inside. There it is. And you see that it, take this, it took the 10 and the 20 and added them up to 30. It took the 5 and the 6 and added them up to 11, and then it runs its other two lines in a blank line. And then you can combine the two. That's what's right here. And then you get this... Uh, a little bit of algebra that goes into it, and that is a heck of a lot of boxes of crackers. Anyhow, that's all there is to it. And you're gonna see that we're gonna be doing this a lot, where you define a function, and then there's so many different ways to fill it in, especially with variables or a combination of variables and constants. Anyhow, hope that helps, and I'll see you for the next exercise.